Hello YouTube, welcome to part 9 of the fake milk character study. As you can see, I'm not in my gym presently. It is because I had to move the shooting of these episodes for this series to a secure location for reasons you will come to understand. Today, we're going to be talking about three topics that Jason really doesn't want to see discussed. One, the forum posts. Two, the fake subs with which he grew his channel. And three, the fake weights. And I will, I will actually go through these topics um, in the order of forum, subs, and fake weights. Before we do that, however, I want to discuss what happened recently. Because there are two events that sort of make it look like Bloho is doing better for himself. And I want to disprove both of them. So the first one, for the people who don't know, it's the minor one. Pete Rubbish actually gave Bloho a shout out on his channel. Now, I think that Pete doesn't really know Jason that well. He just sort of sees that he has a big channel and he remembers him from back in the days. So it's nothing major. I don't think they're in contact at all. I really doubt that Pete is part of the table of Kof that uh, Jason talks about so fondly. Uh, I, I left him a message, a comment to let him know that he shouldn't be associating with him. And he answered me saying that he doesn't judge people, blah, 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 all of that EP nonsense. So I just think he's not aware of what's going on. Um, nothing will come of it because Jason is completely disgraced with the powerlifting community on YouTube. That being said, if you feel so inclined, you should also uh, extend the hand to Pete, who I think is a good guy and who's a very talented powerlifter. And, you know, just let him know what's going on. You know, maybe tell him that Bloho kills his dogs, etc., etc. Considering that Pete has dogs, I think it will make him see the light. The second thing that happened more recently is that Jason actually made a video where he revealed the identity of one of his clients. And apparently it's someone who was well known. Again, I googled the name of the guy. I saw a channel that is massive, which goes to show also that YouTube fitness is really vast because I had never heard of the guy ever. And he falls into the gym shark category, I guess. He's a younger guy with a younger audience. Now, this is where uh, it's important. This is where I think these videos start to make more, make more sense for people who don't get it. Because I see a lot of people saying that even though they don't like Bloho, he's done. A cockroach is never done. A cockroach will pretend to be dead for five years, then wake up one day and steal your cheese. This is what we're dealing with here. Jason is never going to, going to give up. He's going to constantly try and get on top again. And that's what he's doing here. And he doesn't care about the collateral damage. And the issue is that the person who is going to suffer the consequences is that kid. Because he doesn't know what he's getting himself into. So, when you look at the, the scheme that is being run here, it's a young guy, doesn't know any better. From what I've seen on his channel, he's getting started. He started lifting recently. So he's getting his noob gains. And he's extremely young. I think he's not even 18 yet, or he just turned 18. So what, what's going to happen here? I can already tell you. Bloho is going to pretend that the kid gained strength because of, of his coaching, even though the kid would have gained, gained strength on a 5x5 program. And he's going to try and use the notoriety of the kid to get young clients. Because, as I said in the previous installment, the only client that Bloho can hope to score are people who have mental disabilities, or people who are very young. And both categories need to be protected, but especially the people who are young, because they don't know any better. They, they just see numbers, they don't really know or have a context for the numbers, and so they get fooled. And the issue with kids too is that, since they don't earn their money, they don't know what 250 bucks is, and they're just going to steal their parents' credit card and send that to Bloho for co thing This needs to be prevented. So the kid needs to be made aware, he needs to realize what he's getting himself into, and any type of relevance that can be gained from that needs to be squashed as fast as possible, because these kids are going to get hurt. I actually, by pure curiosity, checked the kid's page, and I saw some videos, and no surprise there, he squats and deadlifts with terrible form, which of course Bloho is not going to fix, because he himself lives with terrible form. That's a kid who, from what I've seen, is very tall. I couldn't find his height anywhere, but he looks tall. And 
and he looks to be like one of those ectomorphs, even though that doesn't exist. Issue is, he's been coughed by a hunchback, a 5'7 midget, who doesn't know what it's like to live through those leverages, who doesn't understand what it's like to live through that metabolism. So he's going to give him terrible advice, he's going to get him injured. I've already seen the kid deadlift with a rounded back. He's 18. He's going to be snap CD by the time he's 20. He needs to be saved. A low message or comment to let him know that he's wasting his money and that there are better coaches out there would do the trick. So I encourage people to do that. And for those who say or think that this shows that Jason has a lot of clients, you're falling for the other trick in the book. This is the Almeri attempt by Bloho. It's, it's his last resort. He's, for some reason, managed to score a kid with a large following, a large following of other kids, and he's trying to capitalize on it. Because of course he does. And of course he will. And he's always done that. He doesn't really care whatever happens to the kids. And I can tell you, I don't know if the, I think his name was Joey. I doubt Joey is going to watch this video, but if he does, there's something called the Bloho curse. Anyone who associates with Bloho has something happen to them sooner or later. And that's a kid who, from what I've seen, got viral because of a transformation video and have, a, have a created a following out of it, which is great. He's going to be able to actually make something out of this fitness passion unless he associ associates with Jason. I can tell him and I can tell you that if he does, he's going to run into trouble like anyone else, either because he's going to get trolled by people who dislike Bloho or because Bloho himself is going to betray him. And I want to point out also the hypocrisy of Jason, who constantly makes fun of the gym shark kids, who makes fun of bodybuilding, of aesthetics, and who jumps on the first chance he gets to actually create a breach with that type of audience, because let's be honest, even though that kid trains for strength, his audience is not that. His audience is, is this bra, it's aesthetic bras who just want to look shredded and who want to, want to look better for girls. These, these are the type of people he's trying to coach now. But what, what is he going to coach them for? He can barely coach himself for strength. He cannot coach the people for bodybuilding. This is going to be yet another scam run by Bloho. And if it can be prevented, it should. So I'm not telling people to do anything, but that's my two cents for the people who ask me. This is the situation at hand. And again, it's a misdirection. Just because he has one client that's well-known does not mean that he has 20 clients. It, the two don't equate. I don't know how he scored that kid. With what we know from the past, he seemed to be really intent on actually finding a client that was well-known. He actually announced that in the past because I think that he's realized it's the only way to save his business, to attract people because his channel and his Facebook page have failed to do so. And he actually found one for some reason, and the kid agreed to go public. I think that the kid can be, you know, his mind can be changed on the going public thing. My two cents. So, this was for the current situation, the current event, if you will. Now we're going to go into the meat and potatoes of this video. So before we get into the interesting thing, because I know a lot of people wanted to hear about the fake weights, which I can tell you I have proof, I'm going to explain to you why he's using fake plates. And before we talk about the fake subs, let's quickly talk about, if I can find it, the forum posts. So if you've watched the entire series, you know that my hypothesis and my quote-unquote diagnostic of Bloho is that he's a, uh, a vulnerable narcissist and he has a very pessimistic mind view overall that he's trying to camouflage with his entire alpha behavior. And that also is accompanied with a delusional personality. So he has a tendency to lie all the time. And all of these traits go extremely well with forums. You will never meet as many people who lie openly and all the time and constantly as in forums. It's insane. I've more moderated forums for a while. You, you do meet a lot of pathological liars. And it's the perfect ground for that type of individual because you can just lie about everything because people don't actually see you. People don't have information about who you are. And so Bloho, before we know about 
uh, his YouTube and everything before he started the page, we have information that he used to post on forums. Some of which is confirmed, some of which is not confirmed. There are certain personas, there are certain public posts that he made that we cannot re verify, but others we can because he posted them with certain acronyms like Body by Finaplex. Um, he posted under his real name. There are multiple pseudonyms that we are able to actually link back to him because, of course, he doesn't know how to protect his personality on the internet. He doesn't know how to actually hide his his uh, his behavior, his you know his uh, his habits. So it was easy to find all of it, and a lot of people have actually combined all of it. So you can find it very easily on the internet. So there are a few forums that he used to post on. He used to post on conspiracy theory forums. He used to post on political forums. Uh, from what I've heard. I couldn't confirm it myself, and I think that this is the one that is not confirmed yet. He, he apparently was a writer for a few racist forums. Apparently he wrote for the KKK. I couldn't really verify that, so I'm not going to actually say he did. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. But for the ones that we know for sure, he used to post a bunch of on bodybuilding forums where he would pretend to be an expert on drugs and drug regimen. And if you go back to his posts, it's hilarious because even back then he was already in the mindset of trying to cut. So he would constantly say to people, oh, I look terrible now, but it's because I'm going to get on the cut, which of course never happened. And he also used to, back in the day, brag about lifts. So even before the reverse 500 pound bench, there was already talk of him doing crazy numbers on forums. He was already trying to impress complete strangers on forums. And... His history on the internet is always the same. He goes someplace, he stays for a while, people figure out who he is, and he gets kicked out. The only place where it hasn't worked is YouTube, for some reason. Even though he should already have been banned or kicked from the platform, he's managed to stay, and the reason is why. The reason because is, the community doesn't have as much power on YouTube. And as far as the entity that controls YouTube, they don't really care about him. So he doesn't go anywhere. But he's been banned from bodybuilding forums, He's been banned from conspiracy th theory forums, which I don't even know how that's possible, but it has. And keep in mind that he actually scored a wife on the conspiracy theory forum, where he seduced some poor woman from a different country by pretending to be a, a reptile and, and uh, an overlord of some sort. Like he had superpowers, I think he claimed he was part of the Illuminati. Can you imagine the deception and just the pure soul-crushing moment when she went to the airport to welcome Bloho and she saw the a fat guy waddling off the plane, like you re you're expecting some sort of upper mensch and you get that. You get a, some fat guy with a bald head. And the worst part is that they actually got married. So for anyone who's desperate and who thinks they're never going to find a wife or a woman, Bloho, if Bloho could find two women, I think it's actually three women to get married to, I think you'll do fine. I think you'll be fine. So that's the conspiracy theory thing. On that uh, forum, I think he claimed to be, as I said, part of the Illuminati. He claimed that his family was part of some satanic ritual practices, that he was ro royalty, that he was, uh, I think, connected to some sort of, you know, dark, dark cabal of, of sorts. If we're looking at the bodybuilding forums, as I said, there's the crazy claims of of squatting 700 pounds, etc. And all of that ties down to what he's doing still nowadays, where he constantly lies, and he constantly try to, tries to reinvent himself. And when he loses the ability to do that on the platform, he goes somewhere else. And it's funny because now he's focusing all of his efforts on YouTube, but he hasn't stopped posting. He still posts to this day, but he has changed his method Nowadays, what he does is he's, he's actually trying to promote his coaching. So, for example, if you go on, uh, on 4chan or if you go on bodybuilding forums of all kinds, you will see people, you know, praising the, the ice cream fitness program. You will see people praising his coaching. And some are trolls, but there's a slight chance that that's actually not a troll. That's actually Bloho trying to make money for himself by promoting himself with a fake name. And he does that on YouTube as well. If you've ever been on a small channel, especially people who work for, for who train for strength and who are young, 
because of course he's targeting people who are weak and vulnerable, you will sometimes see people with uh, strangely racially insensitive names who apparently really like Kov Bloho and who try to promote his program. That's Bloho because he uses the same soccer accounts to post under those videos. He doesn't even have the work ethic to create a different set of socks when it comes to promoting his, th his stuff and his program and his products. So, because we're dealing with that type of individual, it's also why it's so important for me to continue to expose him with these to protect people. Because if you have the hope or the thought that he's going to stop or that people are going to become wiser, it's never going to happen. And this one goes out, goes out to the Blaha apologists. Because I get that every single time I post one of these videos, I get a few people who tell me that I should stop, I should leave him alone. The reason why I don't is because he's continuing, right? You think he's done. He's not done. He's going to hurt that kid because he's going to potentially destroy uh, an opportunity for that kid to actually have a job in the fitness sphere. As immoral as that job would have been, he could have actually made money off of it and make a living out of it. And that's going to go up in flames because of Bloho. But Bloho doesn't care because he has a chance to actually get some, some following and some money off of it. So he'll do it. This is the type of person we're dealing with. And you, who want to be nice, who want to give him a, a 15th chance, don't get it. You don't get that the reason why he's been able to continue doing what he does and hurting people and scamming people is because of people like you. You constantly give people like these chances. And I can tell you that even in your life, outside of this YouTube stuff and demands, it's hurting you because there are people who take advantage of you. You try to be the bigger person and help them. And they take advantage of you again because they figure out that you're easy to fool. Same for Bloho. If, if you don't like these videos, just don't watch them. I'm not forcing you to watch them. But I do think that you could learn something from me. You could learn... You could learn being pitiless because it's an advantage in life. There are certain people that if you don't crush them entirely, they keep coming back. It's the same for Bloho. It's the same for Netherbeast. These are scam artists that target the weak. To protect the weak, you have to be strong. Right? You have to shove these people away from communities and societies. It's the only way we're going to actually be rid of them once and for all. So, let's get into the fake subs. But first, let me check if I read everything here. Yes. So, the fake sub thing is actually interesting because I said in the past that YouTube is a, is a game of early starts. The earlier you can start on YouTube, the easier of a time you have for the most part. The people who have the biggest channels have started early because they were able to amass a lot of subscribers early. One second. Could have sworn I heard blow trying to sneak inside my house. So, as far as the fake subs go, for the people who followed, and I'm coming back from what I said before, he had a golden opportunity to become the biggest channel on YouTube because I think he had 50k very early on. And he had a massive head start on most people. And he never managed to capitalize on it. All of the people who started way, uh, way before uh, after him, like Alpha Destiny, etc., they way went past him. And he's been stuck at 110k subs for the best part of a year. He actually regressed for a little while. And that's not normal, because anyone who knows how YouTube functions, once you're past 100k subs, the algorithm recommends your video all of the time, because you have proved that you can grow, and therefore, YouTube is a system that wants to maximize money and profit, and therefore, they're going to recommend products that work. And yet, his channel hasn't went anywhere. If you compare that to, to uh, Bugenhagen, for example, Bugenhagen didn't necessarily struggle, but he, it took him some time to get to 100k. But the second he got to 100k, his channel exploded. And that's the same for everyone. And actually, you can see that with uh, channels who actually know what they're doing, because 
the second they hit 100k, they ramp up the activity because they know that uh, they need to capitalize on it. So correct to set, more place, more dates, they've both done that, it works really well. And yet, Bloho has never managed to do that. The reason is because his channel, he, he doesn't have... So, one second. Guys, my suspicions were confirmed. Bloho has located my position. I was uh, forced to actually relocate into my bunker. Hopefully I'll be safe here, but clearly what I have to tell you today is very important. He's been after me like crazy. He actually sent moon cookie this time. Can you believe that? So, as I said, the entire YouTube thing with the subs, which doesn't really match up, as I said, because when, when you organically get to 100k sub, you're supposed to ramp up. You're, supp you're supposed to actually accumulate a lot of them afterwards. It doesn't just magically stop at 100k. It's not the point. YouTube doesn't want you to. And so what it really shows is that something else happened because it's not necessarily the subs that count. It's the engagement on the page. So when you reach 100k, you ramp up enough watch time, ramp up enough likes and comments to then be propelled forward. But it never happened with him. And the reason why is because most of the fan base that actually got him to 100k doesn't exist. It was bots. And you can clearly see that because he, he was very far away from 100k when he got exposed. I think he was around 60, 70k. And it massively uh, stopped his growth and slowed down his growth because he stopped getting subscribers. He stopped getting recommended. There was no collab anymore. And so his page was dying. And that's the point in history where he, he hit his subs. You couldn't see his subs anymore. And magically... After, I think, a year of hiding his subs, he put them as public again, and ta-da, he had 100k subs. That's just not possible. Meaning that when someone hides their subs on YouTube, it has uh, one purpose and one purpose only. It's because they're losing them. It's, it's a way to actually uh, promote or actually prevent the hemorrhage and promote the retention of people. Because there's a phenomenon where a lot of people leave a channel, some people are going to go with the flow, they're just going to naturally follow the herd, and he tried to prevent that. And on top of that, it was also a way for him to hide certain activities on his channel. I'm going to create a parallel with another one of my character studies, which is Nether Beast. Nether Beast is only interested in money, and something he's always wanted to do on his channel is monetize it. But to monetize, you need to have a, a thousand subs. And he's realized recently that he would never get to a thousand subs because YouTube fitness is dead, pretty much. It's impossible to start a channel if you don't have the, the proper strategies. And so he did the same thing. He hit his subs and then he gained like 700 subs, which for a small channel is impossible without going viral. And then he reactivated his subs when he got a thousand. And Bloho did the same. So Bloho actually uh, purchased fake subs to get to 100k and the reason why he did that was twofold one to shut down the haters because he thought that it would it he would stick it up to them what if he managed to have 100k subs and two because i think that he believed he would beneficiate from having a big channel and that it would kickstart his channel again which it never did because he still has 100k subs and below and the proof i have of that is actually i have multiple proofs but the first and the most obvious is Go on his page and look at his views. Look at the views on each of his videos. He makes less views than me. On average, I have more views than him, and we post about the same amount of videos. That's not normal. That shouldn't be normal. He has 10 times my subs. He should destroy me in terms of views, and yet he doesn't. And the reason why is I exposed it before in previous installments of these. He doesn't really have that many subs. In reality, he has around 20K active subs, if that... And there's only maybe 10% of that who watch his channel. The rest are people who are inactive, accounts that have been deactivated, and fake accounts. Either created by himself, because I don't put him uh, beyond him to actually create sock accounts to, uh, to subscribe to his own page, and subs that he's bought. And I'm pretty sure he's has, he, he bought tens of thousands of subs. Because he was at a period where he was rapidly losing subs, he was going to go below 50k, and suddenly, in a year, he was at 100k. That's not possible. 
And another proof I have of this is he actually made a video celebrating the 100k sub, which for the people who've seen this, this video, I think it's still on his page. It's a video of him unboxing the stupid logo that YouTube sends you that apparently smells like shit on top of being ugly. And the look of, of pure glee on the guy's face when he was uh, unboxing that Chinese plastic garbage really tells a lot about his life. Meaning that that was the highlight of his existence. It's getting a, a subscription button from YouTube. And he had to show it to his fans to shut down the haters. Because in his mind, it was truly something that was worth sharing. It was that big of an accomplishment for someone like him who's never accomplished anything in his life. That's what happened. And so all of that also shows that he's not someone that can be trusted because he went as far as to manigance and organize an entire shutdown of his own channel and his own subs just to be able to accumulate fake subs. And the reason why he had to hide it is because it would look extremely strange because when you buy subs, you buy them in bulk. And for the most part, the, the, the bot farms that you buy them from, they're not super, um, how can I put it? How can I put that? They're not super subtle when it comes to giving you the subs. They're not going to like do it a little bit by little bit. They just do it in bunch. So you get like 5,000 subs. Issue is it looks really strange. And he knows that people who have, would have caught that. He also knows that YouTube even though they should be caring, don't care for reasons I won't get into, but it's mostly because it doesn't really hurt their business uh, model and therefore they don't interfere as long as it's not, it's not too obvious or exposed directly, which he did what it, he had to do so that it wouldn't get exposed. But that's, that's the reason why. And it's also the reason why you see his channel not growing at all because he actually went below 110k subs, uh, I think it was last year, and magically in one night he regained them, which he either bought more subs or he actually made them himself because he's broke. But it's all a way for him to maintain that status. And you might think it's stupid because the channel is dead and you can clearly tell that the channel is not a legitimate 100k sub channel, but it works. Because as you can see, there's that kid that pursued him for coaching clearly because he has a big channel. There are still people in the powerlifting community who give him shout out like Pete because they sort of see a big channel and they think, oh, he must be relevant, but they don't get it because they don't have the information. And I've actually noticed something with the Blaha apologist as well, people who defend him for some reason, they don't have the information either. Uh, they know absolutely nothing. They know the fake murk and that's it. The fake murk is not even 1% of Bloho. There are so many other things that make him despicable as a human and I created a series to expose them all. So that's for the fake subs. And I think that's all I had to say about the topic. Now we're going to get into the reason why most likely you clicked on this video. And uh, most likely also you might have just skipped directly to this part with the timestamps, in which case, no worries, because this segment is actually going to be quite long. And I want you to really Pay attention to my argument and take into account everything I say, because everything I say is connected. You will see that because of the way Bloho is, I don't really have an ability or uh, I don't have the, the concrete evidence to show you clearly that he's using fake weights, because that would include me showing up where he lives and weighing his plates. And of course, that's not going to happen because, you know, he's a... Uh, He's CIA, he trained at the farm, so I wouldn't stand a chance. But I can show you logically, if we follow things that he's given us and told us, that some of the, the plates are fake and that some of the lifts are fake. So step by step, I'm going to explain and uh, expose all of it. So the first point is going to be one that I've already mentioned before, and that is going to be the technical plates. I've already said it before, the reason why I believe that his deadlift is fake, he's lifting fake weights, is because there is such a thing called technical plates. And these are plates that are red and are the same length and the same color, I checked, they're the same color as 50 pound, pound bumper plates. And they're sold by Rogue, it is the same company. Only difference is that the technical plates are five pounds. So if you replace two, only two of the set, that's a hundred pounds. 
of the bar. It's 100 pounds that's not on the bar that he pretends is. And the reason why I think he does that is because it's very easy for him to just sandwich one of the technical plates in between two 55 pound plate and pretend that it's just a regular plate and just fake the lift. So that's that. And the crux of my argument is also going to be centered around the fact that he's never weighted his plates and that the only way to know for sure with someone like Bloho if he's lying or not would be to have him weight his plate. And I mean, weight them on camera, then put them on the pl on the bar on camera, then lift. It's the only way I would believe it. And it's strange that someone like him hasn't done it already, but I'm going to explain why later. So that's for the technical plates. And re very recently, actually, I think as a response to the fact that I exposed him for the fake plates on the deadlift, he's, t he's taken a habit, he started to develop a habit of showing his plates. Of course, he shows them like an idiot from, from the top, where he just shows you the, the number on the plate. And he's done that for a squat. And you're going to see that this is very important because Bloho only responds to things that rattle him. If there is truth in something and it's exposing him as a liar, he's going to respond to it and he's going to try and redirect the discussion and create a lie to camouflage what he's trying to hide. So you'll see that because people were actually, me included, pointing out the fact that his deadlift was fake and he showed the squat and not even a real squat. It was a cambered squat with that much range of motion where no one cares if the plates are real or not on this. It's not the question but it's a way for him to redirect the discussion where it's actually comfortable for him. When it comes to the, um, the, uh, the argument also and the logic behind it, there's the strangest insistence with uh, calibrated plates that he's developed when he started his own gym, which is strange. He never had that obsession before when he went, used to go to commercial gyms and that, to me, shows that it was a way for him to prepare his subscribers. It's something that liars do a lot. They're not going to lie outright. They're going to mentally prepare you to a lie that is going to be coming. And so, by him insisting that he got calibrated plates and that they were legit and it was the exact right weight, it was a way to protect himself from the future accusations of fake plates that were going to come because there is this idea floating around that you cannot fake calibrated plates, which is not true. But it doesn't matter because on the deadlift, those are bumpers, they're calibrated, yes, but they exist as technical plates and they can be therefore fake. And the, uh, the hypothesis and what I'm going to be proving to you is that he uses fake plates on the deadlift, on the good morning, on the bench, on the curl, on the score crushers, and I forgot here, on the overhead press, on the chin-ups and on the dips. Those are all of the lifts that I personally uh, think are suspicious, and I'm going to tell you why. I also wrote here, chains might be fake. Does it matter? No. It's just funny because he's so insistent on the, the chains being real, where he refuses to weight them. But it doesn't matter anyways, because he doesn't know how to use them. When he hangs them off the bar, he makes it so that the, the chains never really get off the floor, or that they don't actually do what they're supposed to do. And I know he's been called, people who do actually use chains in their training called, that, called him out in the comments, and of course they got banned. So, we'll never know about the chains. Let's get into the argument, okay, and the, all of the information I gathered. The first thing that made me believe that he used fake weights were, was actually way back. It wasn't recent. Because when he transitioned from the commercial gym he used to train at and his home gym, he went from overhead pressing 165 pounds for three to 225 pounds. That's impossible. Anyone who has trained overhead press in their life knows that's not possible. It's the lift that progresses the slowest. Putting 10 pounds on your overhead press can take a very long time. Going from 165 to 225 can take two years, three years. It's not something that you'll just get like this it's not realistic progression at all and yet he got it done that to me is a is a is a red flag because you know in a commercial gym unless, unless you bring your own fake plates you're not going to be able to lift anything but real steel and so that was his real strength 165 for three and then 225 for one 
that doesn't correlate at all. And therefore, the plates used in the 225 are suspicious. And one of the plates that he used for the 225 was a blue plate. So it sort of throws a wrench on the hole. The blue plates cannot be fake because they're rogue. You don't know that. I went on Alibaba, the Chinese website, and I could found, I had actually found blue rogue plates calibrated who were fake. It's possible to find they exist. And you can also find plates that look like rogue plates from the side, but they're not actually rogue plates. They're just the same color and they can also be fake. So that's the one thing. That's the one lift where I immediately had my suspicions. It's the overhead press. The second was body weight dips where he used to do body weight dips and struggle with them. And for, uh, for the, the old school and the people who actually used to follow him back in the days when he was the most prolific with men's, he used to do them with a chain around his neck to look hardcore. And he used to do that for the chin-ups as well. The, you remember the plastic chain from the, like, the Halloween store? Yeah, that's the one. I'm sure he still uses that to do his uh, bench and squat and all of that nonsense. But he went to do th from that to struggling to, with body weight dips to repping uh, 90 pounds. So 90 pounds is 245s on the dips, which again, not possible. That's not a possible progression, especially for someone who's been training for years and years and who spent 20 years in the iron games. It's not possible. And the plates he used for the dips are yellow plates. And you can still see them actually. They're still on display on his uh, tree, on his weight tree, but he never uses them anymore. You never see them use those big yellow bumper plates, do you? Why? Because they're fake. Those are, those are five pounds. I highly doubt that they're 90 pounds. They are 45 pounds. So they're five pounds each, I believe. And I think that the same can be said for his chin-ups. I'm not certain about the type of plate he used for the chin-up, but I can tell you that whatever plate he used for that type of lift was fake as well. Because he struggles to do chin-ups with his body weight. You've all seen the video where he does like five and then his face gets hard and he starts shaking and he looks like he's in pain. That was with body weight, with a fake chain around his neck. He cannot do weighted calisthenics. He's just way too weak and way too overweight to do that. And yet he was somehow able to do weighted chin-ups as well and rep them on camera. Even though nowadays he claims that chin-ups and pull-ups in general destroy his shoulders, doesn't add up. And I'm going to tell you the reason why he started his fake weight uh, quest with these lifts. Who else does these lifts? Overhead press, dips, chin-ups, does that ring a bell? Do you not see who I'm talking about? It's Alex from Alpha Destiny. Alex was starting to promote these lifts back in 2017. He was getting strong on these lifts. He was getting size and Bloho copied him because Bloho copies everything Alex does. And it used to be the opposite. It used to be Alex was the nut hugger copying, and then Alex sort of started doing his own thing, and Bloho became the biggest fanboy. And of course, in front of the camera, he hates him, blah, 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 but actually he's just copying anything the guy does because he thinks that he's going to be able to look like him or replicate his strength gains, maybe get his strength on the bench, which is, which is never going to happen. But it's the reason why he was suddenly obsessed with these lifts and the reason why he wanted to look strong on these lifts. If you remember, there was a bit of drama with Alex, who apparently faked a 225 overhead press because apparently it was a push press. Bloho wanted to get a 225 to be able to tell Alex, hey, I got a strict 225. And actually he did it. When they had the argument, when Bloho was still doing drama videos, he used the argument of, I have a strict 225 press. No, he doesn't. It was a fake press because he used fake weights. But it's the reason why he began with these lifts. And it's the reason why also they're so, how can I put that? Obvious, he didn't have the experience he has now on how to fake lifts. And therefore, the numbers made no sense whatsoever. And you'll find that his 225 red press, it's a number that he always falls back on when he feels distressed, when he feels like he needs to prove, he prove his worth, he does it. And regularly on his channel, you'll see 225 overhead press and you'll say like, I haven't overhead press for six months. It doesn't happen. You don't just stop training your lift and you just maintain or get stronger. So it's fake. It's a way for him to actually make him, himself appear stronger than he is on upper body movement, which are his weak point. So that's the first thing. The plates that are suspicious are the blue plates, the yellow plates. 
keep that in mind because at the end I'll do a recap. So that was to copy Alex, as I said. Uh, Bloho was fat back then. I added that just to piss him off. You're still fat, Bloho. And now he can't even do body weight reps on chains or dips. And he never, sh he never showed those plates. Those plates never get shown for a good reason. Is because they look fake. The, the the yellow ones look like the fakest plates you can get on like some sketchy Russian websites. And the funny thing is that actually it wasn't me back in the days, but other people with eyes to see saw those lifts, saw the discrepancy and said, hey, any chance you could wait those plates? Because that looks really strange. You got really strong out of nowhere. Your size hasn't changed because also if you put 100 pounds on your chin up, on your uh, overhead press and on your, um, what was the last time, the last one, the dip, you're going to look like a completely different man. He looked still like a, a fat sack of potato. So people had questions. And when that happened, what did he do? Misdirection. He did something completely different. He filmed his height. People have been asking him to actually measure himself for five years. Ever since he started the channel, he never did. And he did at that moment. Why? So that he could have actually a way to, uh, na to navigate and to uh, reposition the discussion. He wanted to change the subject pretty much. And he managed. The worst part is that that video, if you go back, it's faked. He's not 5'9", he's 5'7". If you look at the way he measured, he took the tape and he put it underneath the mats. He had it, he had it two inches to his height because the tape is underneath the mats. That's how he measured up to 5'9", but he's actually 5'7". But that's, what, that's one thing he did. And I already told, told about that uh, previously, but he did the same thing with his high school diploma where people were telling him, hey, prove that you have a college education, and he showed his high school diploma. You see what he does? You tell him to do one thing, he does something completely different, and then he says, oh, look, I just proved to you that your, your first assessment was incorrect. He's doing the same thing right now with his clients. People told him, there's no way you have 20 clients, what does he do? He, he gets one client, one popular client, out of his hat, and he says, hey, if I have one client and I have 20 clients, well, no, it doesn't work like that. So that's for this portion of the fake weight argument. And again, same thing, but I already said it. I personally told him in my fake milk uh, video previously, I think it was episode two, that I thought that the, one of the red plates was a technical plate and he needed to weight all of them before deadlifting. What does he do? He, showed the, he shows the blue plates. I don't have suspicions about the blue plates, but now I have. So what is he going to show next? What is going to be the next misdirection? So, that was one. Two, road to 700 pound squat. That's something he started doing on the channel. Um, before I continue, let me see if it's still recording. Yes, all good. And as I expected, this one is going to be quite long. So, the road to 700 pounds squat. That makes absolutely no sense, first off, because he's never even hit 500 pounds to depth. And he's never hit 500 pounds to depth in competition, if I recall correctly. Or at least he never got 550. He never was at 600. He never squatted 600. And the, deal, the difference between 600 and 700 is monstrous. So why is he claiming to do a 700 pound squat? The reason is because he's mentally preparing people for more fake weights. He's going to keep getting strength out of nowhere because he's going to keep adding fake weight to the bar. And you're going to keep seeing that. What he's doing here is he's bypassing a goal he's never accomplished, which is a 600 pound uh, squat to depth in competition with real plates and a, and a straight bar without a box, which is what powerlifting is, by the way. You don't squat with a box or with a cambered bar. And he's trying to sell his strength as being superior, which it isn't. But that's also part of the delusion. Road to forward pound bench. He's been at that for five years. He's been saying he wants a four plate bench for five years. He still has a three plate bench. And he doesn't even have a, a three plate bench in the middle, like 365. No, no. He has a 315 bench. That's it. He doesn't have higher than that. And he's constantly regressing lower than that. And you've, he, you've heard that. I mean, that's the running joke on his channel. He's going to hammer the tricep. He's going to hammer the weak point. He's been hammering his triceps for five years. They still look like sausages. He's ha he hasn't gained any muscle in this area at all. The reason why is he doesn't know how to do isolation movements. 
he's too lazy to do high reps, and he doesn't know how to train. But it's his constant excuse of, oh, I just need to fix my weak point. It's never fixed, and yet he's trying to pretend that he's progressing and that he knows how to coach people. And I mean, the, the list, re he said something recently that blew my mind, but on, in terms of weak points that Bloho has had that apparently reappear every three months. Weak points, spinal erectors on deadlift, um, and his fix for the spinal erectors on the deadlift was doing low range of motion good bridges. So he would stack as many plates as possible on a bar, whittle his, his ass underneath it, and then hump that pole barbell to completion for 15 reps with that much range of motion thinking he was going to walk his spinal erectors with that. He, he's completely clueless, is what I'm trying to convey here. So, that was number two. It doesn't necessarily connect with the fake weights, it's just a way for me to show you that the strength goals that he sets for himself are to impress people, and they are also used as a way to acclimate people to the idea that he's going to get stronger so that they don't really pay attention to the fake weights. Three, he stalled for years, years, when he was in commercial gyms. He would do the same lifts again and again and again with the same weight. And then suddenly, he moves to a home gym and he makes progress. And not just small progress, insane progress. 200 pounds on his squat, 150 pounds on his deadlift. That's not possible. Especially for someone who's been training for 20 years, who's ran anabolics in the past, who claims to have came off of anabolics, so he's supposed to be, what, running low cycles nowadays. It just doesn't make any sense. And he says it's because of the environment, of course, because he used to blame his inability to cut on his wives, saying that they would overfeed him. He used to blame his inability to train on the fact that people would stalk him in gyms, etc., etc. It was never his fault. And the issue with all of that is, even if that was true, if his methods are good now, it means they used to be bad. And yet, back in the days, he used to tell you that his methods were the best. If they are so good now, also, why doesn't he compete? Why doesn't he have people, not just a, a Gymshark kid who locked out a following of other kids, why, uh, why doesn't he have athletes on his roster? Why doesn't he have people who actually compete in powerlifting, in, in sanctioned federations? We haven't seen that yet. And the problem is that some people, because in his comments there are a few powerlifters, believe that it means that he's relevant or that he knows what he's talking about. I might be stepping on some toes here, but there's a lot of mental illnesses in the powerlifting community. And there's also a lot in the bodybuilding community, of course, but it's different. You see a lot of delusion in the powerlifting community. You see a lot of lol cows. Most lol cows are focused on strength for reasons, because for some reason it's a breeding ground for that type of individual they, who are obsessed about getting stronger. And so, that's a lot of the guys on the comments. It's either people who run insane amount of roids, or people who are just like him. They're not strong. They're really good at pretending they're strong, but they're not actually strong. So until I see some legit guy on YouTube who actually knows what's going on, not just Pete Rubbish, who Bloho made a full video licking his nuts, and apparently it made Pete happy about the, the situation. The entire thing, because I didn't talk about it, but... I, th I believe what happened was Pete is trying to recover from years and years of drug abuse and Bloho made a video encouraging him and saying, uh, I'm happy for you and stuff like this. Pete didn't realize that that's what Bloho has been doing for the past year. He doesn't do drama videos anymore, but he still does name drops. And now when he name drops, he's basically trying to extend a hand to random people to see if they're going to take it so that he can get some relevance again. And Pete took it because apparently he doesn't know what Bloho did in the past. But it doesn't mean that Bloho has gotten stronger. As, as long as he doesn't compete in the meet, it doesn't mean anything. And I, I can tell you already, he's not going to compete in the meet. And if he does, let's say he does, and he actually gets to squat, I cannot wait for him to try and go to depth with 500 pounds just to get toppled over like a pancake because he doesn't squat to depth, so he's going to be very surprised when he tries. And that's point number three. Number four, and that's um, 
I think I, I talk about the close grip here. I think I do. Let me say that and then we're going to go back if I forgot. But number four, as a recap, the yellow bumpers are fake. Two of his blue and black plates are fake. The black plates especially. Uh, you see them in, all, in a lot of videos. He claims that, uh, I think he claims that either 25s or 45s, they're fives. Those are not real plates. Ah, yes, I talk about that immediately afterwards. The reason why I say that these are the suspicious plates is because he got a 40 pound close grip bench press PR after an injury, right as people said he regressed. So he was benching 270 on the close grip. He snapped his shoulder doing chin ups, apparently. People said, hey, you're getting injured again, you're not getting any stronger on the bench. La next thing you know, he posts a video of him benching close grip 315 pounds and then failing on 340. The plates in this video are fake. The blue plates, a pair of these blue plates are fake because it doesn't make any sense that after an injury, he would be able to get that much of a PR going. It's not possible. So that's a dead giveaway again because he tried to protect his own ego by showing off and therefore he exposed himself. The technical plates are fake until proven otherwise. So at least a pair of these red bumpers are fake until he weights all of the bar and deadlifts them. He won't compete or go to a gym because of stalkers, as he says, but the reality is that nowadays it's mostly because he uses fake weights because he would never be able to replicate the lifts he's done in a commercial gym. If he has so many connections and contacts within, you know, the gym enthusiasts, he has this table of cloth, after all. He can just contact one of them, they give him the key of the gym, he goes in there, he records lifting real plates, just iron plates from that gym, and that, that would just solve everything, but of course he won't. Because he's an alpha male, but he can't go out. He bought his plates with insurance money, that's important. Uh, I think it, it's because he got into a car accident and apparently got a settlement. And the first thing he did with that settlement was buy a home gym for some reason, which think, at it, think about it logically. He doesn't have a house. He doesn't have a car. He doesn't have teeth. He gets welfare money from the government. He buys his food with food stamps. First purchase he does is plates. Why would he do that? Unless he's trying to protect his YouTube channel by trying to replicate or simulate progression in which case he would need fake plates and that would answer and and explain the reason why he would do such a reckless investment and the funniest thing with the plates is that he's trying to pass it out pass it down as actually being a, a smart investment he's told people in his comment that the plates are, are worth more now than when he bought them which is not true any gym equipment you buy once it's bought it loses value because you used it you are never going to get all of your investment back. It's, it's, it's great for a home gym, but it's not an investment. It's not like he bought any stocks or bonds or equity anywhere. But that's the mind of someone who has no idea what the middle class actually is because he has this weird idea as well that people from the middle class take naps. So at some point, I remember he would brag in his comment that he would take naps in between sets. That's just all boy way, I guess. So I think I pretty much ran through all of my uh, my arguments. He's a fake powerlifter, but that shouldn't even have to be said. I mean, anyone who loves powerlifting and who supports Bloho, you're an idiot. He makes a, a joke out of your sport. He pretends to break world records in his bedroom. Do you don't have an issue with that? He claimed to have broken a, a Texas world record for his age group in his home gym. It doesn't work like that. And yet he, he continues to do uh, to do and claim things like this. And fake powerlifter. And now I have a prediction for you. He will have to move very soon. I think he's going to have to, uh, to vacate his current location. When he moves, what's going to happen is he will sell his plates. He will sell off his equipment, including the technical plates, the, the calibrated plates, sorry. And when, when he's going to uh, create another gym, he's going to buy new plates, but they're not going to, cal to be calibrated, and he's going to start progressing again. So the only way you're going to start, it, to start seeing him progress is, one, he's going to start, start adding plates to the bar that don't make sense, or he's going to continue what he's been doing for the past year, where he just does variations. 
he does a, he uses a new bar. He adds bands, he adds chains, and he pretends it's a PR. You hear him all the time talk about accessory PRs. What do you think that is? That's a cope. It's because his main big three hasn't progressed. So he's forced to progress on variations and accessories. And whenever he has a PR on the big three, it's because the plate map doesn't make sense. There is a plate in the edition that is fake. So keep in mind that and get a, keep an eye out for the green plates as well, because the green plates, at least a pair of them are fake. And that's what I ended up. So the green plates, the, uh, uh, the blue plates, the black plates, the yellows are fake. The reason why I know the green plates are fake is because they're involved in some of the good mornings. Um, I, I, there was a weird moment. I don't exactly remember the numbers, but he he had an insane progression on the good morning out of nowhere. And it's because the, the, the green plates were slapped on the bar. And he also used the green plates on curls and score crushers. And when you look at his arms, even though his form is terrible and he's cheating all the time, I do think that there is a discrepancy here. There is something that doesn't quite add up. So the greens are, in my opinion, also suspicious. And the thing with the green is that he has a pair that's legit, for sure, and sometimes he uses them, as I said, for scores, score crushers and curls. But there is another pair that is not. And since he never, of course, shows all of his plates at all times, it's easy for him to just substitute one pair for the other. So that is the entirety of my argument. A lot of people were asking me, how do you know about the fake plates that are? I don't know. But when you're talking about someone like Bloho, someone who's been lying about everything in his life, we're talking about someone who records, everyone can see that he's bored and he still pretends to not be bored. P.S. Not bored. You are supposed to have doubts. This is someone that is way beyond credibility at this point. Anything that he says should be taken with a lot of jasmine rice, if you know what I mean. So, I say that with the argument I proposed, I think I have a pretty solid case to prove that he's using fake plates. And I think that as long as he doesn't prove otherwise, he is using fake plates. And for me, even the filming thing wouldn't satisfy me because he's shown in the past with the height that he can manipulate or at least he can try to manipulate angles. So I will not believe it until he actually does a sanctioned meet. If he does a sanctioned meet, I will take it all back. At least the fake weights. The fake weights, I will admit, he's actually strong enough to get these meets uh, green lighted in a meet. If uh, these lifts in a uh, green lighted in a meet. If that's possible, then of course I will retract those statements. Of course, the rest is not retracted because. There are other episodes coming. This was episode 9. This episode focused entirely on, as I said, the fake subs, the fake weights, and the forum posts. Because it had to be said. Now you can just get back to that video if you want uh, the reference. But we're going to continue afterwards. I have a lot more for you guys that is going to be following. And a lot of that has absolutely nothing to do with fake weights. Because the majority of what makes Bloho such a terrible person has nothing to do with lifting in general. It's just that... He is uh, the human representation of flaming garbage. I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.